Hello once again guys and welcome back to Metal Gear Solid 3 HD with Morris and at the end of the last part we just got to the top of this mountain and met up with Eva. She gave us a bit of a, a rough layout of uh, the Groznygrad base so now we've got to get in there and rescue Sokolov. Which as you probably guessed doesn't happen. Uh, but that's that's what Snake thinks is going to happen. So you know, we, I, you've got to entertain him. you got to keep him satisfied. Uh, but yeah, in this this fight, we should uh, be taking on the last of the Cobras. Um, well, not including the boss, of course. The uh, the Fury. And you know, it, uh, it's one of these boss battles that is more. Di I think it's more difficult than any of the others. One of the more difficult ones, definitely. No question about that. Um, I think it's because I mean Ocelot. You know, I mean, I didn't really have a strategy for Ocelot, but he's not a difficult guy to beat, so you don't really need one. Um, who was next? The Pain. I guess no real problems there, as long as your, your aim is okay. Uh, the Fear was nothing whatsoever. Um, and the End, you know, it might be a legendary sniper, but if he stays in the same place, stays in the same few places all the time, then, you know, he's going to get beaten pretty easily. Uh, but the Fury, as far as I know, his sort of movement pattern... Is, uh, is completely random, so... You know, you never know where he's gonna end up. And his flamethrower does way too much damage, so... <laughs> you know, it can be tricky. But, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, I tend to use... Well, if you're following this... Uh, well, if, if you're following these videos as... a kind of guide. A rough guide, I should say. Uh, then you'll have got the, uh, the, the sort of Trank sniper rifle. Um, and that'll be key in this in this fight. Just gonna eat a couple of these, actually. Ah, <laughs> uh, it's just disgusting. So disgusting, I gotta have another one. Ah, uh, it's so sick, but I can't stop eating them. Yeah, so... <laughs> um, I would, I would, yeah, heavily advise you use this. It's, it's pretty inaccurate. I don't even use a scope, to be honest. Um, I mean, once he's close enough, you can pretty much just no-scope him. If we want to use that horrific term, uh, and it, the the trank sniper rifle does quite a lot of damage to him, um, and we'll just we'll just well, I want to say black up. <laughs> that's what we are doing. I, I have an excuse to say that now. I'm going to black up first because I think that's the best camo for this area. If you're going, if you're not going for like a no kills run, um, I'd highly advise using the knife. If you can get in close enough, that is. Which you you can at the beginning because he's he's not that fast. But uh, yeah, the knife does massive damage to him. But it's whether you want to. It's it's high damage but high risk. So, I'm guessing you're the Fury, <laughs> by process of elimination, quite literally. But seriously, I'm sorry about it. Sorry I killed you for I this. am the Fury. The flames of my rage will incinerate you. I came back from space. As I returned, I had one vision. The world set ablaze. And do you know what I saw there? Fire. Fury. Fury. Makes sense. A great and terrible fury at being alive. Now you're going to feel the scorching heat of that horrible blackness. No way, straight to the point. Fair enough. Okay, let's get rid of that horrible gun. Yeah, so I normally stay over here. It's kind of 
I wish I could give you a more accurate description of what's about to happen. <laughs> uh, but unfortunately I don't have one. And it's really hard to see him as well, which is annoying. But when you do find him, tactical reload. And uh, just fire off three quick shots at him. And then I don't know where he's going to... Oh, here we go. Yeah, another quick three shots. And he's nearly dead already, so... This is going pretty well. Hopefully, if I can just sneak another shot on him, then, well, this fight's going to already be over, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, it's just finding where the hell he's going to be. No! Oh, I should have tactical. I should have done the tactical. That would have been it. Now I'm on fire. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, I think the the box, the cardboard box, puts out the fire. If I remember rightly. Yeah. Cool. Oh man! See, look at that. Ma that is massive damage compared to like any other boss. God, where is it? I mean, I got a rough idea. But... <laughs> uh, hey, who says I'm not good at stealth? So yeah, that that sniper rifle is really well against him. This is the end of the Copras. I mean, I was pretty inaccurate there. If you get headshots with it, it's, it's even better. As long as you get those three shots in. No problem. Join the shot. Behold, the flames of fury, the fires of hell will purge me. Mission Control, do you read me? I'm coming home. I see the earth. Snake, why are you hanging around? You can't fight. You can't fight flame itself. Unfortunately, as much as he'd like to think so. Ah, ah, that's just so much damage. It, it, it shocks me every single time. Ah, uh, but yeah, that's that's the last of them. Oh, and another suppressor. Oh, this is just working out fantastic. And then we come up right in the base. And it's pretty damn easy to get inside. Which is good for us. It's the way I like it. Snake, I think that I think that's the base. 
Oh man, that guard is taking it way too seriously. He is loving it. Okay, so there's four people guarding the weapon. <laughs> this is going to be tough. Alright, back to tranking people in the face. And I'm pretty, I think the, the black camo is the best you can have here. Possibly splitter, but I don't remember where that is. The splitter camo is really good for this part of the game, but I just I I can't remember where it is, I'm afraid. So I must apologize, but black is, you know, perfectly fine. Got nothing against blacks. I mean, black. Camouflage. <coughs> yeah. Again, pretty simple to get inside. They're not looking. <laughs> that guy's not looking. They're just not looking at the entrance. <laughs> what? The... Uh, they're inviting me inside. They want me to be here. But yeah, when you get inside, the scientist camo uh, works again. So again, incredibly easy to sneak around. And luckily, we still have some of this left. I don't have it equipped. Okay, where is it? <laughs> so that's, uh, yeah, the spray. Now what I normally do is just go around and spray everyone in the face. Um, you know, just so there's minimal risk of um, being seen when you're dragging Raiden's body around. <laughs> and I'm calling him Raiden because it's Raiden, come on. There might be a couple more. Well, there's definitely a couple more. Is there one in here? Because I know one patrols around here, but I'm not sure if I got him. No. Cool. <coughs> so yeah, that should be the last guy. Easy enough. Well, I hope it's the last one, otherwise this is going to look really awkward. <laughs> yeah, he just uh, he fell asleep. I thought I'd better take him to his, uh, you know, his bed. I mean, you, c you can knock him out. I think he goes up this flight of stairs, so you can knock him out closer to where you need to be. So you don't have to drag him <laughs> the whole way, uh, like I do, but... Ah, uh, what can I say? It's routine. This is the way I do things. Not because I like being in this position. <laughs> because I don't. <laughs> I'm just trying to think what bosses are next. I mean, I don't count the Sorrow as a boss fight. Even if he does have a health bar. Which he doesn't, technically. Uh, we'll get to that. But I guess it's Volgan, then the Sh Shagahard, then the boss. Yeah, so Volgan's there. That's poor. That is not that far away from the end. I'm trying to think how much gameplay is involved. I mean, in my head, there's not that much left, but the cutscenes are so long. I know that the sort of the time between the when you fight the boss and you know the actual ending of the you know the credits. It's, it's something towards an hour, I think. So, you know, there is... There's still quite a few videos to go yet. But I guess the ending will all be one thing. It might be about half an hour long or something. But I don't want to split it up. There's no point in splitting up, you know, en the ending cutscene. Oh, I'll just pull out this mask that I have in my pocket of this guy's face that I've had on me this whole time and never known what to do with. Standard issue Rykov mask. Uh, yeah, once you've got this outfit, you're free to just roam the base as you see fit. Uh, but I actually don't think there's anything I need to do. I mean, there are weapons and there are some food items as well. Uh, but all that stuff gets taken off you. 
so you know there's no point <laughs> in getting them really I mean you get them afterwards but I'm, I mean I'm not going for kills like you know like we've been doing this whole time so there's really no point um, I think there might be a camo in one of these lockers well I know there is but I don't know which one it is and it's a maintenance outfit which will come in handy later and the thing about this camouflage is I don't know which locker it's in and I don't know whether it's spawned yet because you go back to this place don't sleep <laughs> you go back to this place later on so I don't know whether it's actually here yet so this is this could all be for nothing no stop would you stop that so yeah we'll, we'll see we'll see what happens I'm sorry but I'm gonna have to do this And it's definitely in an open one as well. There's nothing behind the locked ones. He says confidently, but uh, don't don't quote me, please. Okay, I'm pretty sure it must spawn <laughs> afterwards when we return to this place. Either that, or I'm getting hey, how's it going? Either that, or I'm getting really unlucky. Yep, yeah, definitely spawns later. Okay, no problem. Hey, how you doing? So yeah, feel free to roam around, get a few weapons. You can destroy the, uh, like the, the munitions and the um, rations place if you want to make the next, the escape from the base a bit easier. Uh, but we're not going to get seen anyway, so it's not going <laughs> to, you know, it's not going to matter really. Uh, there's a Keratan out there, if you're interested. You can't really see it. <laughs> yep. Uh, but I mean, you wouldn't be if you're following these videos, because that's like the first one that I pointed out. Let me in. Sir. <laughs> he obviously does not walk like that. Sir, have you got a bad back or something? Yeah. You can count on me. What about the philosopher's legacy? I don't know anything about that. Don't lie to me. I mean, don't lie but to are me. Are you Are you trying to kill me? What's the matter? <gasps> I know nothing, I swear it. <gasps> no one but the colonel knows of the legacy. I see. No, don't. Oh. God, the peripheral vision on these games is <laughs> incredible. Well, it non-existent. Who's there? You're the man from the CIA. What are you doing here? <laughs> Either that, or I switched sides and got promoted really quickly. I'm going to get you out of here. <laughs> A man of honor, just like your commander. But I'm afraid you're too late. Too late. Don't tell me, the Shagahards. Hmm. Exactly. The final preparations for Phase 2 are complete. So, Glov, what exactly is Phase 2? I think I asked you this question. Terms, it's a composite range extension system for medium-range ballistic missiles. <laughs> well, you said a bunch of things I don't understand there. <laughs> The Shagahod was originally designed as a tank that could launch nuclear missiles from any type of terrain. There was just one problem we couldn't figure out how to solve. 
The ICBMs we have today are simply too big for the Shagohawk to carry. But the military would not hear of it. They demanded a weapon that could launch a nuclear missile directly into the American homeland. That is when I came up with the idea for Phase 2. But there's no way you could load an ICBM onto the Shagohod. So how'd you do it? By accelerating the Shagohod itself. Accelerating it? In Phase 2, a rocket booster unit is attached to the frame of the Shagohod. The unit incorporates the same technology used in the Vostok rocket that sent Major Gagarin into space. Using this booster, the Shagohod can achieve a land speed of over 300 miles per hour. That monster can go more than 300 miles per hour? Yes. And from this state of accelerated motion, it launches a nuclear missile. So, the Shagohod acts like the first stage of a rocket. Yes, precisely. The range of the missile launched by the Shagohod thus increases from 2,500 miles to 6,000 miles. 6,000 miles? That's enough to strike anywhere in the United States. Not only that, with the Shagohod, there's no need to construct giant silos like the ones used to house ICBMs. All you need is a runway about three miles in length, or its equivalent. And you can launch a thermonuclear strike against any location in the United States from anywhere in the Soviet Union. It cannot be detected by spy planes or satellites. It's a mobile fortress, capable of deploying in secret and launching its payload at any time. A weapon from hell. <laughs> well, you know, there's no need to be that dramatic, but yeah. Yeah, it's a weapon from hell. A completed prototype now sits in the hangar. At present, it is the only one of its kind. But Vulcan is planning to mass produce them based on that prototype. And deploy them all over the Soviet Union. Yes, and that's not the end of it. He's going to ship them to Eastern Europe, to Asia, to all the countries of the Eastern Bloc. Even worse, he intends to use the Shagohod as bait to foment armed uprisings among dictators, ethnic insurgents, and revolutionary groups throughout the Third World. His funds are nearly limitless. He could start mass production tomorrow if he wanted. The reason that tensions between East and West have settled into a cold war is because each side fears the other's power. Deterrence. The idea of using threats to keep one's enemy in check is the perfect word to sum up this state of affairs. But the Shagohod goes far beyond the level of threat. It will render the concept of deterrence utterly meaningless. If such a weapon is unleashed on the world, it will not be long before all nations are engulfed in conflict. The Cold War will end, and the entire planet will be consumed by the fires of war. Vulcan and the Shagohod will be at the center of it all. So you see, it's already too late. No, it's not too late. What do you mean? We've still got a chance. All we have to do is destroy the prototype and the whole facility before they can mass produce it. But just tell me what I need to do to destroy this place. <laughs> All right. The liquid fuel used in the rocket engine is stored in a tank. If you can blow it up somehow. Some C3 ought to be enough to blow the entire hangar to smithereens. C3? You mean that cutting-edge plastic explosive? <laughs> it could be molded into any shape. Why would he say that? The future. Where can I get it? You mean that latest plastic here, explosive that everybody's gone. talking about? It was stolen by a female spy who was here a minute ago. Eva? No, that's not her name. I'm pretty her sure that's her name. Tatiana. She made her way in here by becoming Vulcan's lover. <laughs> Behave. I thought she was your lover. Mine? Ah, she's everybody's lover. No. My lover, your lover, what was the difference here? <laughs> this is the 60s, you know? <laughs> ah, it's a great picture. So where's the C3 at? Who are they? My wife and daughter. They're in America. 
Now Your I wife have a tail. Your family is in the custody of the CIA. Maybe I just saw that badly. <laughs> I only saw it out of the corner of my eye. How long has Tatiana been here? Only a few weeks. A few days before the virtuous mission, then. She said that Khrushchev sent her. Flashback. What did you just give her? <laughs> like five minutes ago. All of the experimental data for the Shagohod. Don't touch Please. me. It is essential that you destroy the Shagohod. I will, but first I've got to get you to safety. Hmm. No. I'm not going. My mission is to rescue you. Leave me, Sokolov! Khrushchev has abandoned me. I cannot return to my country. I would most certainly be sent to the Gulags. What about the U.S.? Yes, I once thought of that. My family's waiting for me there. But even if I fled to the United States, I would once again find myself creating weapons of mass murder. One four four point seven five. Anybody else see that? I'm still a weapon scientist. <laughs> it's there again. To be honest with you. Tired. It might just come in handy. Every day I help create things that should never be used. Things that should never have existed in the first place. Every day, without sleep. Without a word of praise from others. Oh, this cutscene so long. Do not even benefit mankind. Oh, my laptop's gonna explode. They are merely the two it panics if the video is too long. <laughs> It's like, what is this? I can't, I can't I handle these videos. Stop it. Space rockets. Because my laptop's obviously gay. But it was not to be. The space race between America and Russia became the prey of politicians. The space race and the arms race are one and the same. Missiles, rockets, what's the difference? Scientists are all. Yeah, they all look alike to me. Used. <laughs> Watch over my family. She's quite clearly got a tail. <laughs> oh no, it's a chair. That's ah, fine then. <laughs> I'll never look at that picture the same. Oh no. He can surely he can see us through the window. <laughs> what is he, what is he looking at? Just leave, Snake. Just leave. Major, what are you doing here? Well, I tell you what, I'm not doing, and that's freeing Sokolov. <laughs> How do you react to that? <laughs> I mean, you know, it's never happened to me, so I, I couldn't tell you. Don't play dumb with me. If you think you can fool me, you're sorely mistaken. I know the Major better than anyone else. Well, clearly. <laughs> I come here looking for Tatiana, and what should I find? But a greasy freebooter. Greasy? <laughs> I'm not greasy. Oh! Crap. God damn it, why is she so good? What is this fairy disguise? What is this? Ben's in mask you're wearing. Off on you. And then you'll lose sight of who you really are. No, my face. Stay out of this. Ah. 
Yeah, I'll let you do that. I'll let you do that. <laughs> what was that? Some kind of judo? No, it's called CQC, a basic form of close quarters combat. He and I developed it together. Splendid. I'll take it from here. Now it's time for Volgan's special bra <laughs> brand of CQC. Of course. But first, I will make him pay for hurting I No, wait, I only knocked him out. Oh, oh no. No, that was my good nose. No, ow, ow. Ooh. <laughs> but you get your hands up, Snake. God damn it. Oh, man. Okay, his nose will be irreparable at this point. <laughs> oh, Ocelot, you have to be so cool. <laughs> and he's getting his ass beat down. My god, she's not happy. Is that all you got? Is that all you got? Yeah, I didn't even feel it. Ow! Who needs a nose anyway? It's not like I'm known for my looks. This is fine. This is nothing. <laughs> uh. Give me a best, Vulcan! <laughs> okay, we'll call it a tie. We'll call it a tie. <laughs> okay, well, I'm gonna definitely have to pause it now, guys. <laughs> Oh my god, it's over half an hour. Ah, thank you very much for uh, for putting up with this episode of Metal Gear Solid 3 um, in HD with Moonwalker Morris. And I hope to see you on the next episode, guys. Which, again, I think will be mostly cutscenes. Um, but maybe I'll throw the escape in as well. well. We'll see what happens. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. And I hope to see you all on the next episode. See you later.